Hey everybody, this is Christian and here are some of the most useful and advanced Docker commands that I have collected over the last months when I was working on my home lab projects. And before you're getting the wrong assumption here, no, we are not covering a simple Docker run or Docker PS dash dash all in here. <laughs> no, we are really focusing on some advanced and practical commands that uh, you might not find in each and every documentation online. So anything that I found to be super useful when I had to troubleshoot issues with containers or commands that I'm using to manage workloads across multiple machines, how I'm dealing with files in containers or commands that I used to avoid running into problems I had, such as running out of disk space, which was really annoying. So I'm pretty sure even though you might be somewhat experienced with Docker, you will definitely find the one or another useful command in this list you probably didn't know before. I know that's a pretty bold statement, so hope I can deliver on that. But before we start with Docker, I also quickly want to show you an application I came across recently, and this is called Type AI, which is a chat GPT powered iOS keyboard I'm using on my iPhone and on my iPad. And I know everyone these days seems to be jumping on this AI hype train, but hear me out. Honestly, I found this application to be super useful to me because I often have to write text in English, but as you might know, and you probably will also hear it, English is not my mother language. And sometimes I just need to use an AI assistant for grammar and spell checking or finding out how to correctly express myself. Of course, it also works with any other language like German too, but type AI is really amazing for translation as well as wording recommendations or auto completing the text that you're writing. You can even chat with the AI and change the tone of your text. All those cool and amazing features you might be familiar with from ChatGPT. But the cool thing about Type AI is that it seamlessly integrates into any application you're using on your phone because it is a keyboard application. So you don't have to copy and paste text around different applications anymore. This is really, really great. And so do me a favor, check it out. Click the link in the description box below for a free trial of Type AI premium version and find out whether it's going to be useful to you too. And now let's go back to topic and let's go through some of the amazing Docker commands that I found. Okay, so let's first start with the first command that I found, and this is the docker system command. So I know this is kind of a simple command that one or another person will know, but let's start simple and then accelerate throughout the video. <laughs> So the Docker system commands are command collections that you can use for managing disk space or managing Docker resources. These are super useful to avoid some problems you might run into. So what you can do to check the current utilization of disk space is the Docker system DF command. So this will show you all the images, the containers, the local volumes and build cache and how much uh, disk space they consume. So uh, what you can do to avoid this is uh, frequently running a docker system prune command. So this will remove unused data. Note, this will remove all stopped containers, all the networks that aren't used by at least one container, all dangling images and build cache. So I'm not sure if you want to use that command here. So the command that I'm always using to clean up all my older images that I'm not using anymore is the docker image prune command. So as you can see, this will remove all the dangling images. So what means dangling images? As a quick explanation if you have downloaded docker images and you're pulling down the latest version of an image it might happen that the latest tag was updated so the older version becomes unreferenced i can simply demonstrate this by just pulling down the latest uh, latest full tag of the kestra image i know this was updated in the last three months so when i pull down the latest version you can see there is a new version of that latest full tag and it's currently pulling down this version now, once this is complete and we execute the docker image ls command again, you can see that there is a new image updated three weeks ago that has the latest full tag again, but there's still the older version of our image that is not referenced anymore, but it's still there on our hard drive consuming the disk space. This is what you can remove with the docker image prune command. So this will remove all the dangling images and you avoid running into problems. However, the only problem that you still might run into is that when you're not using the latest tag, but you're using pinned tagged version. So for example, here on the Nginx images, I'm always using a specific version to not run into any migration problems and so on. So these older versions that you're not using anymore are not removed by the docker image prune command. So this you can remove with the docker image prune 
dash dash all command. So this will not just remove the dangling images that are not referenced anymore. It will just remove all images that are not attached to a current running project. I'm always doing this from time to time on my workstations and servers to just reclaim that consumed or that used disk space. Okay, next I want to show you the docker context command. And this is something that is really useful to manage remote workloads. So when you are running a couple of virtual Linux machines where you have installed different Docker hosts, you don't always want to connect with SSH to that remote machine and then execute the Docker command. You can all do it from your local workstation with a Docker context. So with the Docker context, you can define remote environments or different local environments. You connect to the Docker socket to manage containers. With the Docker context list, you can see what different types of Docker context you have created. As you can see, those two contexts simply connect to the local Docker socket that is running in Docker desktop. But I also have created another context that is using the SSH protocol to connect to my remote machine where Docker is running as well. So if you want to do that, you simply can type docker context create, then give it a name, for example, server demo with a description uh, docker on server demo one dash dash docker. And then you can define a host with an SSH protocol, so this Docker context connects first to the remote machine over SSH to execute the Docker commands. So let's create this. And to use this, you simply can type in doc context use and then switch to a different Docker context. So now when you execute the Docker ps dash dash all, for example, you can see this is not running on my local machine anymore. This is running on my server demo one. And these are some of the Docker projects that I'm running here. And now you can just type in any Docker command. It will automatically be executed on the selected Docker socket. And you don't always need to manually uh, open an SSH session. You can just use your local workspace to work with remote Docker containers. So that's pretty useful in my opinion. What is also really nice, and I'm using this to copy files in and out of the containers file system. And by the way, this command can be used in combination with the Docker context too. So for example, when I want to copy a file from my local Mac to one of my Docker containers that are deployed on remote server, I can connect to the Docker context and then use the Docker CP command for copy. Very simple, just like on a Linux shell. For example, let's copy a default HTML web page that I've created onto the Nginx server on my remote machine. Now I can simply refresh the web server and it just updated the web page without having to open an SSH connection, somehow mount the volume inside the container. This is really great for any testing on. And of course you can use it to copy and take backups or restore things in and out of the containers file system. This is really, really useful. Okay, so let's find out how to use Docker commands to troubleshoot issues you might have with containers. And I know if you're running Docker, you most likely will run into problems. And most of you guys will be familiar with the Docker logs command. This is what you can use to collect the last logs that are created by the container. But there is a lot more you can do with this command and you can use it in combination with other Linux tools to quickly and effectively search what you're looking for. For example, one thing that I often do is I often just use the docker logs command with a dash f parameter. So this will follow the log output and will not just show you the last log lines. It will also print something new when a new log is created. For example, if you have this log here for the web server, and you are creating another request. You can directly see this in a log file. And this is very useful for troubleshooting things. Now, of course, some containers or some services might produce a lot of log output. For example, traffic is such a case where there are a lot of logs created, especially in debug mode. For and sometimes you have a hard time finding exactly what you're looking for. So this is why I'm most of the time using the docker logs command and pipe this to a searching tool like grab, for example. So one thing you need to be aware of is when you're using the docker logs command is that you need to redirect the standard error output to the standard out in Linux 2. So this uh, syntax makes sure that it's both redirected to the same standard out. And this is what you can then pipe into a grab searching tool. For example, if you only want to see the lines that contain an error, you can use that and that, uh, to filter the logs uh, 
to match what you're looking for. Now, grab can do many, many things and it can be used in so many complicated ways. The one thing that I want to show you here is to enable the regular expression mode with a dash capital E parameter. And then you can do some really cool things. For example, if you, you don't want to see all the error lock lines, you only want to see the error lock lines of the middleware, for example. So then you can use a regular expression to use logical operators and so on. So this, for example, will only show the free lock lines here where it finds an error and the word middleware. Of course, you can also do many other cool things. Basically everything that you can do in your regular expression, you can also search for specific dates or specific times. This is really, really amazing to filter and troubleshoot log files in containers. Now, what you might also know from others of my videos is how you execute a shell or you attach a shell to a running container for troubleshooting and looking into the container's file system. Like, for example, if you execute an interactive terminal on the traffic container and run a bash command, for example, then you can open a bash shell. So some Docker containers don't have the bash shell, so mostly they only use the default shell. Then you open a shell inside the container's file system, and then you can look into any of the files that are in here. You can also check any of the configuration files for example, the traffic.yaml to see if everything is correctly set up here. And of course, you can also do certain tests like an IPA to get the local IP address of this container and see what is the current route uh, when you want to ping an external host. And you can check certain things like pinging the gateway. And maybe you also want to do some advanced network troubleshooting like executing a curl command. So, okay, so that's not existing in here. and. This is an issue you will have most of the time when you are trying to troubleshooting networking conditions in container that most of the containers that you're running won't have all the troubleshooting tools that you need. So what I found to be super useful is a container image that already comes pre-installed with all of the network utilities and troubleshooting tools you might need. And this is called the NetShoot container. So I'm using a simple docker run command and I remove it afterwards. It is called netshoot. And this will run the netshoot container image published by Nikolaka. Open this with an interactive terminal, of course, and just open the bash, for example. So now this will pull down the very, very small and efficient container image and attaches a shell to it. And as I said, this comes with all of the common Linux utilities for troubleshooting network conditions like curl command, for example. If you want to get the output of a specific website, you want to troubleshoot the IP addresses, the redirection links, whatever you want to see. You can also ping, of course. And what is also pretty cool, you can even run advanced commands in here, for example, the open SSL command to open a secured connection to a specific host that you want to troubleshoot. Here you can inspect certificates, for example, when you pipe this command to the OpenSSL and inspect the certificate. You can look up the certificate chain and all of the troubleshooting or network troubleshooting things that you might want to do in containerized environments. Of course, you can run this container, attach it to a specific network and can test if you can connect to a database or whatever. So for example, if you just run the same container, but you want to attach it to the network front end, for example. So now I can see if I can, for example, ping the traffic container, for example. This is how you can troubleshoot that you can connect within the same Docker network to other containers using name resolution. So I'm using this so many times whenever I have any problems with networking in containerized environments. Of course, you can also spawn up this container in Kubernetes environments, also pretty useful and troubleshoot and test any of those things. By the way, because I'm just talking about troubleshooting and logs and so on, I wanna give you one bonus tip, yeah? Let, let's do one bonus tip. And this is in Docker Desktop. So make sure if you are using the Docker Desktop application that you need to switch back the Docker context to use the default one. So otherwise you will see errors in here. But now, as you might know, the Docker Desktop is really great to work with containers in a local environment. Now, I recently came across those Docker extensions, and these extensions are, are sometimes really nice. For example, I just found the Logs Explorer extension, so this is really great to troubleshoot those logs on Docker environments that you have on your local workstation. You don't need to use a grab or a CLI tool. You can always type in something, for example, 
type in a certain keyword and this is displayed in a very very nice and clean way you can also filter logs for standard out standard error output so just look for some of those extensions you will find some really great stuff in here <laughs> Okay, so I hope you could learn the one or another cool command that you didn't know before. And if you knew all of them, well, congratulations. Yeah, you can now tell me in the comments which one I missed. By the way, you will also find all of these commands in my Docker Cheat Sheets repository you can find on my GitHub. So make sure to check it out. I leave you a link in the description of this video down below. Now that's it for today. Happy home labbing, everyone. And I catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>